And there's two ways in which you and I can serve. Two ways. And these are the same two ways that Jesus had. Remember, Jesus never used PowerPoint. <laughs> the only two ways that we can influence and serve the lives of other people, to enhance and enrich the lives of other people, the only two ways are our words and our presence. Our words and our presence. Do you realize with one word you can honor somebody, you can humiliate them? With one word you can lift somebody up or you can tear them down. We create our organizations, our institutions, our families, our businesses by our conversations. By the ways in which we talk to and with one another. In healthy families, and healthy churches, and healthy businesses, people talk with each other. In unhealthy businesses, unhealthy families, unhealthy communities, and unhealthy churches, people talk about each other. The power of our language. The power of our language. Some of us haven't gone back to our high school reunions because of what people said to us in our junior year. The power of our language. Do you realize in order to be in a healthy relationship with another human being, you need five comments of appreciation to every one of criticism? Did you give your five today? Did you get your five today? Why is it we're so reluctant to show, show, show each other appreciation for their service, the things that they've done for us? Think of the people who fi fixed that lunch that we had, that marvelous lunch that we had today. All those people, think of that. And, and after, they leave to, after they leave today, after we leave today, the dishes that will have to be washed, the tables that have to be cleared off, all the work that's gone, and how often do we appreciate other people for what they do? I was giving a, giving a presentation one time talking about the power of appreciation, and the man in the back row, back row was listening. And as he was listening, he was re reminding himself that he'd been married for 25 years, and for 25 years he had pretty much taken his wife for granted. He had his job, he had his hobbies. He went hunting and fishing when he wanted to go hunting and fishing. He had his buddies. He went to high school football games on a regular basis. His wife had pretty much raised the kids. She took care of all the medical appointments, all the dental appointments, all the school appointments. She cooked and cleaned. She took care of the holidays. She did the shopping, she did, the, she did the, all the housekeeping. And he much, pretty much came and went as he, as he would and then leaving his check. And he realized that he needed to be more involved in the life of his wife and his children. And he had pretty much taken her for granted as well as his ch children. So that night on the way home, he stopped at a Hallmark, bought a card, and wrote in that card how much he loved her, how much he appreciated her, and how much he was going to recommit himself to their marriage. He left that card on her pillow and went to work. After the work, he went to a high school football game where he ran the clock, came home at 9 o'clock at night. His wife is sitting at the kitchen table and she's weeping. Card unopened in front of her. She says, you haven't opened the card. He said, I don't need to. Why is that? I know what you're going to say. What am I going to say? You're leaving me, aren't you? And she said, please open it. And she did. And she read up his love and his appreciation and his commitment to the marriage. Do you think that one card had power? Do you think that became a start of a new beginning 